At the end of the day, I'm doing what feels right for me and chasing down my dream. I got into Vancouver yesterday and today was a work day. I came to Vancouver with the purpose of training my goalie coach Pascal Vlana in hope that I'll be able to translate some on ice results this coming fall when next season starts. Currently, I'm unsigned for next season and I may not make $5 million a year playing hockey. Matter of fact, I make almost no money doing what I do for a living, but I consider myself a pro in every other sense because every time I step foot into the rink, I come with a pro's mentality. There's no excuses, there's no stone unturned, there's a no quit attitude and an unrelenting drive to find new ways to do my job better for next season. And considering like many other guys out there, I'm still unsigned and have no idea where I'm playing next year. It's a good time to start embodying that pro mentality. This is today's video, what training as a professional goalie with a professional goalie coach is really like. I'll sit a goalie in a chair and we'll shoot. Well, if you bumble f it, where's the puck gonna go? If your hand is down here, it's not in the right position. Bending your effing leg, that's where your hand needs to be. Come on, get off there. I'm really close to throwing my stick. It's a really cool thing. Breathe. If you cheat, you're gonna get caught. It's 100% certain. I know you can do this because you've done it a million times before. Yeah, just focus on your narrow. You gotta bend your legs. If you don't bend your legs, all the pressure is going to be in your hips. So let's go back to that one you had before. Just pivot and shuffle back. So you get used to pivoting and shuffling back. Stay lower. Ready? Backwards flow, well, same side. Ready? Point your toe, push. Push back. Backwards flow, point your toe, push back. Stop. Now bring your stick out further and get, that, get those legs bent enough to get the ice. Get that stick on the ice. Backwards flow. Good. And point your toe. Good. Back again. Backwards flow, point your toe, back over good and that point the toe creates a separation and then the reception of the backside push leg go push excellent blocker side leg push good back go back good legs are maintaining good distance go tired a lot of things going on in my mind and my body so and i'm glad i'm glad that you're saying that so the first thing you need to do is set your eyes yeah. okay so the first thing to do is set your eyes i'll be far enough away from you okay the second thing you need to do is remember that your upper body is not playing a role in this. We're not recruiting your blocker to, to bring you over. We're not recruiting your glove to bring you over. It's all core, so your abdominals, your, your hips, and your, and your quads, right? So backwards float, good, and then here I go. Shuffle, good, back again. Go, good, and back. Backwards flow, good, you maintain it, good job. Good, ready and go. One thing on your blocker side, which you'll see on the tape, is that you're backwards flowing, but then you're, you're forcing a push rather than just pointing your toe and allowing the pivot to take place. As you backwards flow, if you point your toe, what happens? You're gonna rotate because you've stopped one side of the car. If you stay in the middle and I'm over here, you're dead meat. Backwards flow. Goaltenders need to be tremendous lateral skaters east-west. Okay, so backwards flow, and then you're pushing. So glide that foot across the ice. It's very delicate. Backwards flow, and push. So don't, you're going right back to the post. And we don't want to go back to the post. Okay, now angle yourself a little bit so that my stick blade is flat with your hips, with your ding-dong, flat. I call it noggin, navel, and nuts, right? That's, that blade has got to be squared noggin, navel, and nuts. Okay, and then I bring it back. Noggin, navel, and nuts. So let's go. Backwards flow. Bang. There you go. You're giving me something like a fatigue push and a shuffle had a baby. Somewhere in between, you're giving me this, this morphed creator. Backwards flow. Go. Perfect. Back. Perfect. Again. Good. And it will get better. Normally, we would start with pucks down low, but I don't want you going down and up, down and up, because it's going to screw up the rest of the week. We'll start you off in your butterfly so you can just stay there. Keep your eyes in front and get to her before the puck does. There it is. Good, stay there, don't move. I want you here, okay? So you're gonna look this way, over here, to here. Yeah. The top of the net is 37 inches, 36 is three feet. Yeah. Okay, so your head is above that. When, you, when you're crouched down, what happens to your stick? Your stick can come out, so watch. If I crouch down, my stick can get deeper into the trajectory. You see that? Yeah. Deeper into the horizontal angle so we can touch bucks out here. You understand? Yeah. Now, when you are here and you pull up, what happens to the stick? Yeah. It lifts. Yeah. And then what happens to the stick is you start to be blind. The chin cup on the mask is the voluntary blind spot. You volunteered 
You made the decision. I choose to be blind from my. I choose to be blind from 33% of this shot. We can't do that. The puck is on the ice. Your chin needs to see all the way to your stick. If it does, you're not going to flinch because nothing surprises you. Everything is in the same frame. It's all coming from a very small movement that's about this big. And you know whether it's going to rise in the cone or not. Okay? So you got to have your stick out front so that when you come, all it is is this. I'm just touching that line and that puck is not coming at me anymore. If you don't get a little bit lower, then you kind of, you lose it because you're, you're trying to get to the spot where you should be, then you're acting to the puck. And that's why you feel a little delayed. Coming over or whatever, and as you're shooting, then I'm getting lower. Yeah, then, then you're going. Yeah, it's like a domino effect. You want to move into position, and the very next movement is the reaction. Bang. When you move over, and then you're starting to collapse everything in, what happens when it hits a, a leg or a tip or a deflection? I'm like a, a beam pull, and then I got Right, you can't. So you're in position like this, and as soon as the puck is, as soon as the puck comes, you're going down towards that puck to make the save. If there's a deflection, then you've got access to the second half of your body. No, it was really good. No, the last time wasn't that bad either. It's just that what happens is you go and do stuff, and the decay on skill starts right away. Big key is that all the basics have to be really zeroed in, and that's why you always have to be in that position all the time practicing what you're going to use 99% of the time. You have to see the problem and the solution in the same frame. Okay, so the beautiful part about me wearing this camera is that if your hand is down here, it's not in the right position. She is exactly 24 feet away from the center of the net. So your hand needs to be up, okay? And the way you get your hand up is by bending your effing legs, okay? And that's where your hand needs to be. You have to see the whole glove in the frame here. Well, if you bumble it like you say, where's the puck going to go? Down, right? And you can and gravity works, so you can get it, right? But if it's coming into the middle here, yeah, you would just want to use your mass. Right? Is that uh, okay? I'm I'm really close to throwing my stick over top of this whole place. Listen carefully. You're in position. Your hand is right there. Okay. No, you had it like this. So then when that shot comes, then you have to do this. So it's there. Come on, get off there. No, no, no rest. There's no rest for the wicked. The palm has got to be right there. Okay? It's got to be open. If it moves, then your palm moves with it. I'm swatting it, Marty. You are. And you're, you're overthinking it. We're catching pucks. What we need to do is figure out little ways where we can... Like, I can see, and that's what I want you to do, is be able to use your full range of motion with your eyes and you see goalies look like this and look back they don't need to see it right in the center of their vision to know there's a player there what hand they are under the stationary or moving which are the three rules when you scan okay. right so when you look and you scan you know what hand they are so now you've got the mental picture stuck in your head right you look again she still hasn't moved or he still hasn't moved you know she's right-handed you know she's stationary you know what zone she's in so you know your marks okay so at that point you look and then bang, you stop right at the stick blade. You don't go, like I don't go like this, and then come back to you. I stop right at your eyeballs. Because I know where your chin is, I've seen a human being before, so I know, bang, I know exactly where your eyes need to be. Okay, if you watch the goaltenders, one of the best goalies to watch is Halleback practices with his eyes, practicing, practicing, very, very good goaltender. Okay, so look it, okay? The reason why you fumbled that puck is because you were low and beautiful, you scanned beautifully, you knew the method, or, the, or actually you'd say this, you knew the drill, you didn't know the method. Okay, okay and that's all that Thomas Magnuson says, okay, drill or, me or method. So you drilled it. You went, oh, I know he's not shooting, oh, I'm gonna come over here. So you stayed up. I don't have to work as hard because I know the shot's coming here and then you decided to react and that's why you didn't catch the puck. Even though you know it, you have to do the method. You have to understand what is it, when you use it, why does it work, how is it executed. You need to answer those questions. And you can't cheat. If you cheat, 
you're gonna get caught. It's 100% certain. Because you're riding high on two, three, four wins in a row, now it's like, oh, we got this, we're in the groove, and that's when we stop doing the things that make us successful. I spent last season playing pro in Sweden, and I split it between two teams, one near Stockholm and one on the other side of Sweden by Gothenburg. And I want to do my job to the best of my ability. Like I said before, I don't make much money playing hockey, but I do it because I love it more than anything else on the face of this planet. I'm blessed to call Pascal my goalie coach, and more importantly, call him a friend. And I believe he's my golden ticket to the chocolate factory for success next season. Help my team win more games by consistently stopping more pucks on a more consistent night in, night out basis. I may not know what team that it's going to be considering I'm a free agent right now, but I know wherever I go, I'm going to make a difference. And that's the bottom line. And for now, I'm just focusing on my game, trying to get one day better. So anytime I take a nice bath, I usually sit in here for about 20 minutes, give or take. Cup of Joe. This is what it takes, baby. Div three, Sweden, here we come. Let's go, Div three. Remember when I was a kid, I never really had an understanding of what the older guys, the bigger guys do, and I wouldn't consider myself one of the bigger goaltenders out there by any means, but I would consider myself, like I said, I'm a professional goaltender, working with a professional goalie coach with the goal of getting better. And that's the only reason why we're out. Pascal's extremely hard on me, he's very critical, and he expects the best of me, I expect the best of myself, and that's what a typical work day looks like when you're working with Pascal and, and I'm on the ice. So I really hope you enjoyed. It was awesome, there's gonna be a couple more videos like this. I'm doing new videos every Monday, so I would love to have you out for the next Monday upload. Also, my new podcast, Slaying the Biscuit with my boy Pat Shea. Episode two just came out on Thursday. Episode three will be dropping this coming Thursday. We just had Casper Cascasuo, NHL goaltender, fellow YouTuber, come on the podcast last week. It was awesome. As always, if you wanna pick up some awesome butt end scripts, some block knuckle guards, police, toe ties, support your boy. Also get some great products that I support and think that everybody should have. Promo code Trav sucks will save a couple bucks. Thanks for watching and enjoy some of the outtakes that weren't quite good enough to make this video. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the Monday upload. Show that sign. Relatable. So I told Sweeney I was gonna meet him down at the river dock or whatever in about uh, two minutes. I figured I'd try to come up here and flag him down. And then I was like, eh, I don't really wanna go meet him. I'm just gonna go back to the hotel. Sweeney, it's me. I'm not coming tonight. I can't tell him I abandoned him. We gotta make it seem like I tried to find him. I was concerned. Make it seem like it was his fault. Put the millimeter Peter away. Oh, hey. Hey. I was looking for you. I walked around the place, I couldn't find you. I was like, what the you hell? Are you grandfather, you couldn't find me? I did a lap around the whole area. The I, big couldn't, yellow building I couldn't, I couldn't find you. If only you knew how hard I tried. You drank my last cup of coffee. Trav would normally make coffee, but as sense is down, people aren't buying enough butt ends. Block, prolaces, uh, manscaped.